Hello YouTube, this is Tutoring Potential and we are continuing the Geometry Semester Review for Palm Beach County. This is part five. We are starting with 43. Write the missing reasons to complete the flow proof. Okay. Given ADB and CDB are right angles, that's here. Angle A equals angle C. Prove triangle ADB is congruent to triangle CDB. And what they've done is they've given us statements in flowchart form. If angle A equals angle C, if these base angles are equal, then AB equals BC and I just wrote out the reason for that which is if two sides of a triangle are congruent the angles opposite those sides are equal and for D the reason for the congruence is angle angle side which is A A S angle angle side because the two angles well the side is not included between the two angles so any two angles and a side will prove congruence we write AAS to show that the side the sides that are congruent that we prove congruent are not included between the angles okay it wants us to write a proof given SD is perpendicular to HT and SH is congruent to ST prove that SHD is congruent to STD the uh, triangle congruence alright so at least part of the given in this case both parts of the given are always number one for the statement the reason for number one is always given my next day our next statement is angle HDS and angle TDS are right triangles that is because that is the definition of perpendicular lines definition perpendicular lines number three you see that yeah angle HDS is equal to angle TDS the same all I'm saying is that these this angle is equal to this angle and that's true because right angles are equal they're all 90 degrees. Four is SD is equal to itself. SD is congruent to SD, which is the reflexive property of congruence. Now I can prove those two triangles congruent through the hypotenuse leg theorem. Uh, the two hypotenuses are equal this leg is equal to itself, it's a shared leg, so by, by, by hypotenuse leg theorem we prove the two right triangles are congruent. So that's 44. What, at 45 we want the values for x and y. Well, if both these sides are 21 these are equal then x equals y if x equals y I can substitute y in for x or x in for y so what I'm going to do is normally be x plus y plus 36 equals 180 but since x equals y 2x plus 36 equals 180 subtract the 36 2x equals 144 x equals 72 y equals 72 46 also wants the values of x and y. Well here I'm given that AB is equal to AC so measure, angle B is equal to angle C so this angle is 60. If this angle is 60 and this angle is 60 then BAC is equal to 60. If BAC is equal to 60 and BAD is equal to CAD, then AD is a bisector, 
and then both these angles are 30, so y equals 30. Now if I have a triangle where this is 60 and this is 30, that is a right angle. 30, 60, 90, right triangle, x is 90. Forty-seven. Is there enough information to conclude the two triangles are congruent? If so, what is a correct congruence statement? Well, I just show AC is equal to itself by the reflexive property. So we have the hypotenuse leg theorem. So that's the reason. I guess if I want the congruent statement, I'd say triangle BAC is congruent to triangle DAC. I added that AC is equal to AC. So is is that a, is the, is there enough information? To me that's yes because I, I should be able to just add that. I can assume that. I can assume that these segments actually meet at A because they appear to meet at point A. Very few other things we can assume when writing proofs in geometry. Which overlapping triangles are congruent and why? Well, for A, FIH is congruent to GIH. IH is equal to itself, reflexive. FI is equal to GH, which is given. I and, well, FIH and GHI are right angles, so what I have is side, angle, side. For B, these are overlapping, but if I separate them, I have side, angle, side. Side, angle, side. So they're both side, angle, side. We do have to name the triangles. And this one, triangle EAC, is congruent to tri triangle BAD. Okay, this this one's a little 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 hard to read. Points B, D, and F are midpoints of the sides of ACE. ACE is a large triangle. EC is 39. This is 39 because these are the midpoints. D is the midpoint of EC. ED is equal to DC, and those are each half of 39, 19 and a half. DF is 17. BD is 35. Find the perimeter of BDF and the large triangle. Small, the, the center triangle, well, BDF and then the large triangle. Well, what, I, what I get are parallelograms. This is 19 and a half. If BD, if this is 35, then these are both 35. So this top one is 19 and a half. This is F. E, D, B without the diagonal. So this is 35, EF is 35, FA is 35, this is 17, BC is 17, AB is 17 because B is the midpoint of AC. So BDF, the perimeter of BDF is 35 plus 19 and a half plus 17, which is 71.5. I want to just check that it passes. It passes uh, triangle congruence, well, a triangle inequality, which says that the third side must be less than the, the sum of any two sides and greater than the difference. So 35 is less than the sum of 17 and 19.5. And then the large triangle, this will be 70 plus 34, which is AC, plus 39. So if 
for A, C, E, the perimeter is 143. That's on camera, good. Find the value of X. What I have are this angle is equal to itself. What I have are two similar triangles. Uh, this, this triangle, the sort of cap here, and the whole triangle. So that means the sides are, while not congruent, they're in proportion. So 2x plus 4 over 20 is going to equal 1 half because this is the midpoint of this length. So this is going to be half of this one because whatever, whatever length this is, this, this whole segment is twice that. So then I cross multiply. 2 times the quantity 2x minus 4 equals 20 times 1 or 20. Distributing 4x minus 8 equals 20. Adding the 8, 4x equals 28. x equals 7. DF bisects EDG, find the value of X, find EDF, find EF, and find FG. Okay, first we are going to show that these triangles are congruent. This is marked, this is equal to itself, all right angles are equal, angle angle side, triangle EDF is congruent to triangle GDF. So these sides are equal. And I set 7x plus 12 equal to 11x. Subtract my 7x, I get 4x equals 12 divided by 4, x equals 3. So EF is 7x plus 12. I substitute the 3 in for x. 7 times 3 is 21 plus 12. EF is 33. FG is 11x, so I can I could substitute 3n for x, 11 times 3 is 33, but I know that this is equal to this. So it's a good check, and it only takes a second. So EF and FG are both 33, x is equal to 3. Okay. 52. Name a median in the triangle below. A median goes from a vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So AD, BE, and CF are all medians. In, angle a, in triangle ACE, G is a centroid, and BE equals 15. Well, the centroid is the point of concurrence between the three lines between the three medians, okay? So, right, I, I, they've drawn the three medians. G is where they those three intersect. What is going to happen is this shorter distance is going to be half of, BG is, is half of GE, or BG is one-third of BGE. So GE is two thirds. So if B, if the whole thing is 15, basically the smaller segment will be five, and the larger segment will be 10. A third of 15 is five. Two thirds of 15 is 10. Fraction. The fractions might make it a little more difficult, but this distance is half this. So th this distance would be half this. You're just making sure. Uh, that this, the small distance is half the larger distance, not not the whole, um, not this whole line, not this whole median. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop here. We're going to start the next part with number 53. As always, thank you for watching. Uh, please post questions or comments in the comments section below.